What I'm going to do is to highlight the key messages from these guidelines. Um, the, our top 10, and the first key message was that chest pain means more than pain in the chest. It could be pressure, it could be tightness, it could be discomfort in the chest, could be shoulders, arms, neck, back, upper abdomen or jaw, as well as shortness of breath and fatigue. They should all be considered anginal equivalents. And uh, Dr. Tammy Holland said it very well, always uh, take a good history and physical for any medical condition, certainly anybody with chest pain. Dr. Januzzi already discussed at length, we really have one biomarker today, which is high sensitivity troponin. These are the preferred standard for establishing a biomarker diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction, allowing for more accurate detection and exclusion of myocardial injury. And he, he made the distinction between myocardial injury and MI, which I'm not going to go into, but it certainly reduces the ED dwell time of our patients and unclogs the ED. Early care for acute symptoms is extremely important and patients with acute chest pain or chest pain equivalent symptoms should seek medical care immediately. They should call 911. They should not try to go to the ED by private vehicle because sudden cardiac death could be a manifestation if it's a true MI that they are having. And this is despite the fact that we saw that most patients will not have a cardiac cause for their chest pain. Share the decision-making. Uh, Dr. Chatterjee said it very eloquently that involve the patient in you know, whatever test you're going to do, invasive angiography, non-invasive testing, CT. Talk about the risk of adverse events, radiation exposure, costs and alternative options and involve them so that they feel comfortable with the decision that you and the patient makes regarding additional testing. I think several of you made, made the point that testing not needed routinely for low-risk patients, the risk of an event is less than 1% in these individuals. There is probably a role for exercise ECG in some of these individuals to get their functional status, maybe a role for coronary CT for calcium score to actually do intense risk stratification in certain individuals, but many of them do not routinely need additional testing. Use clinical decision pathways. Uh, usually that will help you risk stratify patients better. And I think we saw the, um, that the Massachusetts General Hospital uses the heart score. There are many different pathways, EDAX, NOTAR, even high sensitivity troponin pathways, but they will help you better risk stratify your patients. Although chest pain is the most prominent symptom for both men and women, Women tend to present more with accompanying symptoms. They have more nausea, shortness of breath, and other symptoms, and be cognizant of those, those symptoms in somebody presenting with chest pain to further risk stratify them. Again, identifying patients most likely to benefit, benefit from further testing in general, it's the intermediate risk patients who benefit most from non-invasive testing. The high-risk patients, often will no, need to go to the cath lab for definitive diagnosis and benefit from invasive coronary angiography. I think Dr. Tremel very, very elegantly explained the new semantics. So the new terms are cardiac, possibly cardiac and non-cardiac. Atypical really doesn't mean anything. If anything, it tends to suggest that it is not cardiac. And at the same time, we say that women, diabetics, elderly may present with atypical angina. So atypical is probably misleading at best use cardiac, non-cardiac, and there is a bucket of possible cardiac people with ANOCA and other conditions that may need additional testing. And finally, again, to repeat structured risk assessment, using clinical decision pathways, doing a good history and physical is key to correctly diagnosing and rapidly diagnosing chest pain in individuals. This is again, a graphical description of the top 10 messages of this guideline. 